Hello and welcome to the Making Keto Work for Women presentation for the Low Carb Living Summit. My name is Emily Countryman. I am the CEO of Shift Set Go. And a little bit about our company before I dive into this presentation. We are a chain of weight loss centers in the Pacific Northwest, so up near Seattle, Washington. We opened in 2011, back when it was me, myself, and I. And we have now grown to many locations here in this area, as well as 50 plus partner centers throughout the United States. And of course, a virtual program. We offer a coached meal replacement weight loss program. And in the last decade or so, we have helped literally thousands of clients lose well over 150,000 pounds and counting. And our main client is typically a 50-year-old female with about 50 pounds to lose. So we help her do that and maintain it, which is the key to everything. So a little bit about what we're going to cover today on this Making Keto Work for Women presentation. We're going to talk a little bit about keeping hormones balanced while on a keto diet, understanding the weight gain cycle so that you can lose fat rather than just lean mass, maintaining your muscle mass with your weight loss, and how not having the right support could be your missing link to success on keto. So before I dive in, I want to see if some of this sounds familiar for you. So some of this is what we hear from our clients all the time before they join our program that you heard about keto from a friend or low carb. So you've been cutting your carbs, maybe just eating all the bacon and your weight falls off. You lose a quick five to 10 pounds, think everything's going great. Then bam, you hit that plateau. Um, you start to double down by meticulously tracking and tweaking your macros. You measure, weigh, plan all your food. You even miss events. You maybe don't even go eat out with your friends because you're so worried about what the meals might be, um, might change your macros, might mess up all that progress. So maybe you can eke out another one to two pounds before stalling out again. And then you start to waste money on those keto test strips or the breathalyzers or all that fun stuff to track your ketosis progress. And weight loss is now becoming your full-time job. So if that sounds, sounds familiar to you, you are not alone. Obesity affects one-third of Americans, which obesity is having a BMI of over 30. And 67%, nearly 70% of Americans are overweight. And that the difference there is having a BMI over 25. So between 25 and 30 is overweight, 30 and above is obese. Now, is that the best way to measure health? Absolutely not, but it is the stat that we have to easily quantify this information. But bottom line here is it tells us that as Americans, we are sick and getting sicker every day. So why? Why are we getting sicker every day? Well, it was kind of the perfect storm. It's because we've had an abundance of sugar in our diets, which when I speak of sugar, I'm also speaking of simple carbs, your white breads, white rice, things like that, white flour in our American diet. And most diets do not address metabolic syndrome. So I'll go back to the sugar real quick. Um, about 100, 120 years ago, Americans maybe had five pounds of sugar a year. And a few years ago, when that was tallied up again, we were eating 150 to 200 pounds of sugar per year. So of course, that's going to cause havoc on our systems. It was not intended for that. So we're going to have some issues which lead to this metabolic syndrome here. So if you've not heard of this before, it is something in the medical field that they will diagnose a patient with basically if they have two or more of some of these symptoms here, they're adding more all the time. So here we have visceral obesity, uh, insulin resistance, hypertension, high triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, they're adding sleep apnea, PCOS, so just a myriad of issues. And typically when a patient comes in and they present with two or more of these, they are classified to that physician as having metabolic syndrome. So 
Why does that matter? We're going to get a little deeper into that here in a minute. First, I want to go over some of those hormones and how they're affecting that. So as we know, when we are on any type of diet, changes in our diet and our body fat can lead to hormonal changes. Usually we think of maybe our thyroid um, or how is our metabolism working, things like that. Um, But also what can happen is as you're losing body fat, Um, So not the muscle mass, but the actual fat. A lot of estrogen is stored in that fat cell, so it's being released as we're losing fat, and that can cause a temporary interruption in our menstrual cycle as women. Um, It can even cause a little bit of hair loss, like when after a woman has given birth, she might experience some of that hair loss with the hormones kind of readjusting um, after birth. And the nice thing is that once everything kind of steadies out when they've lost the weight and returned to normal and they're done with the keto diet as far as the fat loss goes, um, and those fat cells have been emptied, then things will level out and get back to normal. So they won't have that estrogen overload anymore. So it's kind of a detox for your fat cells. So many women who suffer from PCOS can actually benefit a great deal on the proper keto diet. So not just any keto diet where they're eating high fat, but a proper keto diet that's fitting for them and working with their hormones. So some of our top weight loss hormones, and I know we talk about lots and lots of hormones when we're looking at weight loss, but these three I really want you to understand because they are hugely involved in weight loss. So we have our insulin. That's one I'm sure that you've heard of many, many times before. Um, Many Americans are edging on type 2 diabetes or they're pre-diabetic, so we're very familiar with this one, but a high insulin level in the body typically equals weight gain. So insulin is that key to fat storage, which we're going to talk about in a minute so we can really understand how the body gains weight so that we can know how the body can lose weight. Next one we have here is ghrelin. I always call this one gremlin because it's the one we don't want. It's a little gremlin. That's our hunger hormone. So it's released when we have an empty stomach, triggering our brain that it's time to eat. And then leptin, that's the good guy. We like him because it's the satiety hormone. So the more leptin, less hunger. But we want this all to happen naturally. So we would not take a bunch of, say, you know, leptin supplements and just try and trick our body into saying, hey, you're not, you're not hungry anymore. And, you know, you're not going to have any more ghrelin and you're going to keep your insulin at bay. Now, could some help, supplements help with your insulin levels if you're high, high blood sugar, things like that, of course, but we want our body to do this on its own so that we can actually lose weight and maintain it for life. Then, of course, there's other hormones that can affect our weight, like the estrogen, which we talked about a minute ago, cortisol, testosterone, and a dysfunction in any of these hormones could lead to weight gain. All right, so this is my favorite part. This is the weight gain cycle, and once you really understand this and how it's working with your body, you are able to lose fat and to lose fat for good. So the cycle and kind of the key components you'll see over on the left is that high insulin, high ghrelin, and low leptin. So that's basically what we want to flip on its head. So we're going to pretend this is a clock. We're going to start up at the the 12 o'clock hour. So we, we wake up you know, whatever time you wake up, you're going to eat breakfast, you're you're starting to get a little hungry, your brain's saying, hey, feed me something, I'm getting hungry here. So what do we reach for now? We're at about the one, two o'clock spot on our, on our cycle here. Well, typically breakfast food is cereal, toast, bread, bagel, pastry, waffle, (laughs) carbs, carbs, sugar, sugar, right? I mean, maybe you eat a hard boiled egg or some bacon, something like that. But for the standard American diet, we are eating something that is high in carb and sugar. So we eat that. And then the next step is our blood sugar rises. It says, hey, I see that you have filled me up with carbs and sugar. Those com- those simple carbs turn into sugar once they're in the system. So our blood sugar goes up. Now we're down to about the four o'clock. And the pancreas says, hey, we got to deal with this blood sugar, so we need to produce some insulin because high blood sugar equals a danger to the body. So the body cannot allow itself to have a high blood sugar level. So the body says, all right, let's produce some insulin. And maybe if this was that 120 years ago when we had five pounds per year, that little bit of insulin would spit out. The body would say, hey, got it, understood, and it would do what it needs to do. However... 
because we have produced so much and we have ramped this cycle up like a little hamster on a wheel, our cells are now resisting that insulin. That is called insulin resistance. I'm sure you've heard that many, many, many times. You might even be one of the many Americans that have has that that insulin resistance. So what happens is the body produces some insulin, but the cells are resisting it saying, nope, we've already seen this before. We don't want this anymore. So the blood sugar doesn't lower normally like it would have. So that's our little blood cells saying, you know, putting little armor up saying, no, 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 we don't want that. So the body says, well, what are we going to do? We have to get this blood sugar down. So it goes the back door Way. So now we're at about the seven, eight o'clock here. So the body says, all right, well, all I know to do here is to store these extra calories in the fat cell. So like I said earlier, the key to the fat cell is that insulin. So the body has produced too much. So the insulin, since the, the blood cells would not respond, or the blood sugar would not respond, goes over to the fat cell, unlocks the door and says, Go ahead and get stored in here until the famine comes because obviously this body is preparing for a famine. So what happens is it pushes it all into the fat cell and our fat cells grow and grow. So this is how we gain weight every day, every week, you know, whatever her cycle is. But what happens after that, which, okay, that could be fine if you were trying to prepare for, say, a famine or you knew, hey, I'm on vacation. I don't care what happens. I'm going to get back to it when I get home, you know, whatever that may be. You said, okay, I store a little bit of fat in here. So be it. But what happens is then our blood sugar drops rapidly and that sends signals to the brain that says, hey, you're tired and you're hungry. You need some sugar to combat that. So, you know, maybe it's an hour or two later and we say, gosh, I'm just so hungry now. I'm craving something. So we had breakfast, you know, maybe we had that bowl of cereal, but now we're starving again. And we say, all right, I'm just going to have this snack at the vending machine or I'm going to run through the, the drive through grab a a Starbucks and a breakfast sandwich or whatever it may be and the cycle just continues and continues and continues and that is how we gain weight. So once we can stop that cycle, doesn't mean we have to have zero sugar, although that would be wonderful, <laughs> zero added sugar. The more we can cut back on it, the better our body will be at being able to have proper insulin levels and not be storing all that extra fat in the fat cell. So then let's talk about when we're losing weight. So we said, all right, we understand the fat cell. Now we got to lose or the weight gain cycle. Now we need to lose weight here. We need to make sure that we are maintaining our muscle mass while we're losing weight. So when we lose weight on just the standard American diet, which its acronym is SAD, which is fitting, <laughs> it typically results in losing muscle mass in addition to fat. So if we you know, have lost some weight, we're losing muscle and fat. So the scale's going down, which is great. However, what's happening behind the scenes maybe is not so great. Then if we gain any weight back, it's gaining back in the form of fat, not muscle. So you're not gaining muscle really ever unless you are on some sort of workout program with the proper nutrition attempting to do so. You have to really be trying to do that. But if you're just gaining weight, for the sake of gaining weight because your eating habits or you're back in that weight gain cycle, it is body fat. So a proper program will maintain your muscle mass while you're burning your body fat, and that can and should be tested with a body composition scale. So if you are on a keto diet, obviously it's not something that you need to go out and buy some you know, big professional grade scale, but if you have somewhere near you that you could go get it tested at, maybe a higher end gym or you have a wellness center around, that would be a really great idea so you can see how your body's responding to what you're doing, making sure that you're not losing muscle mass as you're on your diet. And and then also taking a BCAA, which is a branch chain amino acid, while either on your keto diet or if you're exercising for muscle gain is crucial to maintaining your muscle mass to make sure that you are not losing it. It's really that, that building block of the muscles. And it doesn't mean you're going to become, you know, a, a muscle builder, a bodybuilder type person. It's just for that lean muscle mass that you need to fuel your body, run your body every single day. So what does that look like when broken down? And I call it the curse of the yo-yo diet. So let's pretend here that you are starting weight as 200 pounds with a body fat of 
So obviously my images are just silly ones from clip art taken on here, but it's just kind of to give a visual of what happens when you're just doing a, a standard American weight loss diet where you're cutting your calories. So let's say you've lost 20 pounds on your diet. So that's fantastic. However, what happens is that you lose lean mass and fat. So you're going to have lost 10 pounds of the water in the lean tissue and 10 pounds of fat. So fantastic. You're down to 180. However, your body fat still 50%. So, okay, maybe you can keep losing um, some weight at this point, but if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep losing a little bit of muscle as you go and maintain that 50% body fat. And that really becomes an issue because when you go to maintain either that 180, maybe drop down to 150 or 130, whatever it may be, you don't have the muscle mass there to help you with your weight maintenance. And the more lean mass you can have in maintenance, the better because that is what is going to burn everything every day. Then let's assume that you are one of our, you know, typical Americans who go on a diet, gain it back. I believe 95% of people that go on a diet will gain it back and you gain 20 pounds back. So now your current weight is back to 200. However, what you gained is fat. So now your body fat is 60%. So we went from 50 to 60. We're actually in the worse spot than when we started. So if you've ever thought, my metabolism is just broken. I feel like I've just dieted so much and I've broken it. That is unfortunately probably partially true. Now, is it broken forever? No, but it's definitely not in the best shape that it could be. Can it get back to that 50%, 40, and then 30, and then whatever your goal body fat is? Absolutely. But it just has to be done the right way so that you're losing fat and not lean mass. The last thing for um, women succeeding on a keto diet is to make sure you have the right support. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there is just so many nuances to a keto diet. You know, are you eating bacon? Are you adjusting your macros every every meal that you're eating? You know, there's just so much work involved to make sure it's done right. If you're eating too high in fat, not enough protein, then you could be losing that muscle mass that we don't want to lose. If you're eating too many carbs, you might not even be in ketosis. So really making sure that you have someone supporting you, especially someone that's an expert in this field, they can make it so, so simple for you. So you're not spinning your wheels and you're just burning fat every single week until you get to your goal. So with that, we have a bunch of support for you. We have a few PDFs that you can grab. We have um, getting started on a keto diet. We have our keto eating success guide, and we have a bunch of low carb recipes for you. So if you are interested in that, you can go to shiftsetgo.com forward slash five, the number five keto mistakes. And if you use the code shift, you can grab it. It's a $29 bundle. You can grab it for free. Um, that is our thank you to you for attending this low carb summit. And we want to make sure that you have as many tools as possible to help you in your weight loss success so that you can be as successful as possible and lose fat and not muscle mass on it. So again, go to shiftsetgo.com slash five keto mistakes to grab that bundle. Use code shift. And then a few takeaways um, just to make sure that you are able to make this keto work for you is to ensure your adequate protein to maintain your muscle mass. Again, we need that there. We want to make sure we're not losing it. Maybe you can go check on it on a professional scale somewhere and just see where you're at. And then add a BCAA. So whatever keto your program you're doing, you definitely need a BCAA powder. We have an excellent one. It doesn't have any fake sugars or dye in it. Any that I've ever seen at a grocery store does have that in it. So definitely something to look for when you're looking at the ingredients in one. So just look for a really high quality one. Um, check your sugar intake. So again, can you get back down to five pounds a year? Probably not with our standard American diet, but you can definitely aim for no added sugar, which would be amazing in your day. Um, but even just under 20 grams a day would be awesome. And then go download that Making Keto Work for You. All those PDFs, that's our gifts to you, has recipes, tips, and more. Want to make sure that you are as supported as possible. And go get some support. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and a done-for-you program if that's something that fits your lifestyle. Otherwise, just grab those PDFs and it'll definitely help you get a good head start on your weight loss for 2023. So thank you again so much. If you want to get in contact, you can email me hello at shiftsetgo.com. Or you can check out our website, see if there's a location near you or our virtual program. Thank you so much.